Good afternoon, and it's a pleasure to be speaking to Richard Williams, who's the Principal and the Vice-Chancellor of Harriet Ward University. Thank you so much, Professor, for taking the time to speak with us today. Nisha, very pleased to have a chance to talk. All right, great. Congratulations on the Climate Hub. Uh, this is a very important initiative, especially the time we have COP28 going on in, yes. in uh, Dubai. So if you could tell us a little about um, the reason for setting up the Climate Hub at this time and, and how it's aligned with the university's goals to support climate action. Well, as a business and technology university for over 200 years, we've been part of shaping the future of business engineering for that time. So we want to do the same uh, in this challenge we have with the climate. And so it's part of our intention to be absolutely shaping the future, just as we have been involved in shaping the past. So it's uh, number one on our agenda. How can we shape the future for the benefit of society? Because the university actually is a, is a charitable body. Mm -hmm. uh, we exist really to we measure our performance in terms of impact on society. So it's a very natural thing for us to want to do. Education is, is going to be a, a key driving force yes. uh, to push climate action for the next generation and, and pretty much I think we will see that play out. Yes. Um, how do you see universities such as yourself playing that key role? I think you've absolutely hit the nail on the head there because the one thing that's missing in the challenge that we all have is we need to raise the confidence and ambition of everyone that we can address climate change. And as an engineer, I, I believe we can do that. But at the moment, generally, the public perception is one of concern, even despair. And I think it's the role of universities to lift communities out of that concern and to shine a light on some of the things that we can do. I think the public will demand that because addressing climate change, it's really a people issue. It's a technology issue and it's a money issue. And we need to get all of that sorted out. But at the moment, generally people have low expectation and we have to raise their confidence because we can address climate change. But only if we encourage people to believe that and show them the pathway through which we're going to get there. Well, it's, that's actually a very key point. And I, I, I do have a great hope for, for youth because I think they're very, very concerned and I yes. see a lot of them being very involved, uh, you know, whether they, as activists or just to have their voice heard. Uh, in terms of, of the Climate Hub and, you know, the mm. clean tech expression, um, the, you know, everything that has come together as part yes. of this. If you could shed a little light on the highlights of this and what it has, it has meant for the university and, and your efforts to sure. support uh, Well, action. we're so proud to be a university here in the Middle East and here in UAE where we've been for over 18 years. And so what we've done is we brought together some uh, embryonic companies and recent startup companies in the Climate Hub which illustrates some of the great ideas which will absolutely contribute towards both adaptation and mitigation of climate change. And so we have around 20 different exhibits of this and some of the things are just amazing. You know, we had the king here last week yeah. and he said to me as he was leaving, Richard, this is fantastic. And so I've been using those words because I think what he saw was, for example, a company that we have that's making bricks very, very sustainably mm -hmm. uh, from waste materials that will actually take only 5% of the energy compared with how you would make a normal brick. Mm -hmm. And that's incredible. Mm -hmm. And a company that's designing fishing nets that allow the sustainability of marine life so that you can selectively catch fish of a certain size and a certain type and then release the other fish out. I mean, isn't that incredible? Mm -hmm. And um, some students who came together with this idea of when you're recycling your rubbish and you've, you've got something with a barcode on it and you've, you've, select, you've got to decide which bin you're going to dispose, which trash can you're going to dispose of it. Um, a little app they, which you scan the product wherever it is in the world and it tells you how to recycle that component. It's called Scrap App. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. So there are so many things that sort of touch your heart and think, we've just got to get on and do that. Mm -hmm. So the Climate Tech Hub 
brings together some of these ideas and it's inspiring to see and there are ideas that we just need to scale out and that we need uh, business and investors to get behind these ideas and this is just a selection mm -hmm. of things from our community and from the Scottish community and the local UAE community. Um, is the university going to support these companies as well? How, when you said you know it's important that we scale them out. Yes. So how are you going to also support them, or is this just a showcase for what they can offer and invite investors to come here and look at them? Um, we have a finite amount of resource because we, um, we know we are a charitable body. We're not an investment house. Okay. Our biggest role is to create and support talent, mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So enabling those people to bring their ideas forward. We do support them if there's any development of intellectual property and we do arrange uh, meetings with them with investors. Um, we don't put a lot of our own resource in because it's quite difficult for us to, to do that. We absolutely want to be uh, a platform for connecting in with other investors and promoting um, and exciting and inspiring people. So yes, we hope that we would uh, attract other people to invest um, and really take forward the intellectual and the basic investment that we've put in through the infrastructure that is available in the, the university. We come down to the question of students and mm. their involvement in, in not just climate action, in the Climate Hub as well. Yes. Uh, what are your feelings about it and what have you noticed so far? Well, one of the ideas in having the Climate Hub is that we would so much want our students to be involved with it. I mean, not only have many of them been involved in creating some of the ideas of the companies in the Climate Hub, but we've enabled students to come along and host guests and to learn more about those technologies. So they will carry those stories away with them and tell those stories, which will just enhance their confidence as they tell out what could be the impact of adopting this? So we have dozens and dozens of students involved with the Climate Hub. And actually, if I might tell you a little secret, um, when King Charles uh, came here, mm -hmm. um, he did some uh, laser cutting of the Royal Cipher that has mm -hmm. the CR on it. That was an idea from a student. And so we created this laser cut of the CR. And furthermore, the idea of the student was why don't we turn that into a little jigsaw and connect the pieces together so maybe the king would like to take that as a gift and um, play with his grandchildren with it. So you know that's an idea of a student put into action within days and wow. So if we're able to empower students, listen to students, they have such great ideas and they can absolutely shape the future. And that's what we want very much to do as a university and that's what the world needs. It needs young people to show that they can make a difference right now. Well, that's actually very incredible and very true. Which comes when we you know we come back to the UAE for instance and they're taking the initiative to yes. drive climate action or to drive awareness. What are your thoughts about it and how they're going about it? Well, you know, I've been talking to and doing a few interviews recently. And the first question that the Western press always asks me is, do you think the UAE is the right place to hold COP28? I say, I just cannot think of a better place to hold COP28 because, first of all, the UAE is absolutely committed to carbon reduction and, of course, has put investment in its place. And secondly, of course, it's a historical oil producing nation like Scotland, what better than to go to a nation that's wanting to accelerate transition into renewables to bring the rest of the petroleum community with it? So I can't think of a better place actually to have COP28. Similarly for our university, we will carry on working with oil companies that share our values for rapid transition because we have to do that and we have to lead out technology of the future. So for UAE, I think it's established its absolute credentials. It's shown it wants to make the change. And that's why it's so appropriate that we're able to work in this nation with our climate hub. You know, we're proud to be here. This is going to be a place of change and confidence building. Thank you, Professor. It was lovely chatting to you about such important things today. And uh, we look forward to seeing bigger things from Harriet Watt. Look forward to seeing the impact that the university will create and to be part of that, to celebrate that and to showcase that in the future.